Hi, I'm Al Williams. This is the Digilent Spartan 3 board and it's running right now. Uh, the first CPU I designed and built on a FPGA which is called Blue. And actually it's a derivative of the Blue computer that was used in Caxton Foster's computer architecture book which is a great old computer architecture book from the 70s. It's very hard to uh, take the pictures and operate the computer at the same time, so forgive the video. You'll see if you're not familiar with the Spartan board that there's four seven segment displays and there's a decimal point there. There's eight switches, there's four push buttons, and there's eight LEDs. And I wanted Blue to have a, it's a pretty traditional 16 bit architecture, sort of mini computer ish, like maybe a Data General or, or a DEC uh, from that era and I wanted it to have a nice front panel. Well, the problem is there's not really enough stuff here to, to make a nice front panel, right? Uh, maybe not. Now you'll notice we have to make good use of the buttons here. This button's the reset button, so we won't be messing with it. We need 16 bits of input because it's a 16-bit machine, but we only have 8 bits of switches. So as a result, there's a switch register and we can shift things into that sh switch register using this button here. When you hold down on that button, it will show the switch register up here, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. The LED here that's on is one of the state LEDs, and that LED tells me that right now I am in a particular mode, and that particular mode is in the register select mode. So what that means is it's the, that when we use the action button, and I'll get to that in a second, we're going to move that decimal point and that's going to tell us what register we're looking at. Right now we're looking at the program counter. But in fact, now I'm looking at the accumulator, now I'm looking at the switch register, and now I'm looking at the instruction register. So in this case, not very exciting because we've just reset things. Okay, this button changes the mode that I'm in. So you'll see the LEDs are moving every time I push the button. So that was the register select mode. This is the load program counter mode. This is the examine mode. That's how we can look through memory. Basically it loads the accumulator from whatever the program counter is pointing to. The deposit mode lets us put things in from the switch register into the current program counter location. We can single step or we can start the program running. The last two LEDs, the next one will come on when the program is running and the last one is a program controlled LED where you can just use it for an output bit. So let's enter a very simple program. There is a cross assembler and there is a way to bootstrap over the serial port. You can see the serial port here. So really you probably wouldn't normally do this, but for the purposes of demonstrating this, I'm going to start off by putting a deposit mode, which is the LED number three, and I'm going to put in a 16-bit word of 5. Notice when I hold the enter button down it shows me the switch register. You can tell it's the switch register because the decimal point there is on. So I don't have to shift anything in. I could have entered 0005 but since I knew that there was already a 0 in the switch register I just put the 5 in. Okay, Nothing's happened yet but I'm in deposit mode so when I hit the action button it's going to stick that five into memory and by the way it's using the memory on the Spartan board not on the chip itself so there's some RAM underneath this board and it's going to increment the program counter which is the register we're looking at. Whoops I hit the wrong button. Sorry that button. Now the program counter goes to one. Okay now I need the next instruction. That, that five by the way is an increment accumulator. So I told you that one of these LEDs is under program control. I call that the Q LED after the old RCA 1802 Q bit. 
and there's an instruction to toggle it. That instruction is 24 hex. So I'm going to shift in a zero. Notice we still got the five in there, so now I've got 500, which is not what I want. And I'm going to put in 24. Okay, so now I see I got 0024, and since that's what I wanted, I'm going to enter it. Okay, and that put in my toggle the qubit, which is the 24 instruction. And now I want to put a halt instruction in. Oddly enough, a halt instruction is 0000. So I put that in. And now I need to do a jump. And I'm going to jump back to location 0. So a jump on this machine is A and the three bits of the address. So in this case, that's A0, or sorry, three digits. A000. I'm going to put that one in. Okay? Let's check our work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to load PC mode. That's the LED one. I'm going to shift 00 into the switch register, 0000. And I'm going to tell it to put that back into the program counter, which is the what we happen to be looking at, so the display immediately reflects that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the register select, and I'm going to tell it that I'd like to look at the accumulator. And I'm going to go to the examine mode. The examine mode, every time I hit this button, it's going to take the contents of memory at the program counter, put it in the accumulator, and move the program counter up by one. So our program should be 5, 24, 0, A000. Very good. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to reload my program counter with 0000. Okay, it didn't change. Why not? Because we're looking at the accumulator. But it did actually change. If we flip the registers over to look at the program counter, it would have gone back to 0. And so I'm going to go to my run mode and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and start executing. And notice the QLED came on and I've got an increment of the accumulator. The accumulator had A000 in it because we were examining memory so now it has A001 in it. And if I tell it to run again I've got A002 and my light went off. And again the lights on A003, A004. Now, in this case, I've got a halt instruction, but I could just as well have been single-stepping this by activating a particular mode here, and then every push of the button would execute one instruction, and I'd be able to step through the registers and look at the program counter, the instruction register, and the accumulator. So the instruction set's fairly regular. Uh, like I say, nothing magical about it. Not like the new CPU that I'm working on, Wonder, which is pretty much completed, which has a very novel interesting 32-bit architecture. Like I say, this is pretty much right out of the 70s. Uh, one neat feature is when you're depositing into memory, this serial port will just take a raw dump. So most of the time, what I'll do is bootstrap it through the serial port to what I call Bluemon, and then I can use a serial terminal to interact with the board, uh, you know, examine memory, set memory, and more importantly, load Intel hex files, which the cross-assembler will generate. So anyway, that's Blue, uh, which is, like I say, based on the Caxton Foster computer of the same name from Computer Architecture, and uh, it's a very novel front panel. Thanks for watching.